Hi, thanks for having me here today. It's a pleasure to be here and talk um, with such great folks who are sharing so many great ideas. So hopefully I won't bore you um, with any of my own great ideas. Um, it, when I think about this idea about breaking boundaries and I think about the notion of AI in the field of marketing communications in particular, being a humanities kind of gal, I turn back to Prometheus. Um, and obviously, if you kind of remember Prometheus from ancient times in Greek mythology, he was the titan who created mankind and then gave us the gift of fire, the creative spark, that illumination of human beings. Um, most of us, even if you're not in marketing, are communicators and hopefully creative. Um, for this great sin, Prometheus was chained to a rock and his liver was pecked out by evil demonic birds for eternity. So I hope today we can get to an answer of exactly why um, we won't have the liver eating scenario for us. Um, in digital marketing, you know, having worked in digital marketing for a pro far longer than I'd like to admit, um, marketing itself was transformed in the 1990s and then with the digital revolution and then also too in the early aughts with the onslaught of social media. So we're kind of a little bit used to this idea of mechanized automated change. When I started teaching about eight years ago though, and one of the reasons I got into teaching was to kind of help students navigate this ever-changing world, um, I kind of noticed that sometimes I wasn't able to hire people as a hiring manager that I wanted. Um, and in my conversations with colleagues in the industry, they were also saying the same kind of things. Um, and then also the British government had a great study in 2016 that said, hey, by the way, there are thousands of vacancies in jobs caused by the fact that there's a lack of digital skills. And sometimes it's just for a lack of things like Outlook, which we in business take for granted. So then that got me and my colleague Dennis Olson thinking about how can we prepare our graduates to be able to handle this world. And like a lot of well-meaning colleagues, we were like, okay, they better be experts at Adobe Creative Suite. They better be experts at Google AdWords. They better be real specialists. And then, as with all your assumptions, you start talking to people in industry, talking to other people, and they said, no, no, please don't turn these people into pixel pushers. Please don't make these people hyper-specialized. Please actually give them the attributes that they can thrive in this environment. And that's something we call digital dexterity. And what we mean here is that you're not a specialist on a single platform. And in the context of AI, that you don't necessarily need to geek out and be an expert on chat, GPT, mid-journey, Wally, Dolly, whatever you need to think about for that. Um, instead, it's having this idea about being willing to give things a try. And everybody in this room has probably had that technology moment where you're like, I don't want to seem stupid or old because I don't know how this works, so I'm not going to do it. Um, we need to make sure that we all kind of still are willing to have a go. The second thing, too, is bounce back, resilience. When you have a go, when you try something and it doesn't work out, you try again and you're not afraid of failing. And I think for those of us that have the privilege of working with young people today, particularly Gen Z and Gen Alpha, I think that you probably have seen that there's a real fear of failure, even small failure. And that probably means we failed them, um, but that's a topic for another day. Um, and last but certainly not least, the ability to problem solve. You know, digital marketing is amazing as a marketer. It throws off a lot of data, but what employers want is the ability to see the signal through the noise, the ability to look at all the stuff that AI generates um, and understands what's good, what's bad, and how that's good or bad. Now, all these other revolutions have happened in marketing um, for the past 25 plus years. Um, but AI has a unique attribute to it in the fact that it has been attributed with lots of dark things, including, I think, destroying the entire human race. Um, but also, I mean, if you hit refresh on your browser, every five seconds there's a new story about how your sector will be replaced, how all these people will be replaced, no one's gonna have anything to do. What a great environment to have confidence in your job prospects. Um, I just saw a, a survey that said 64% of marketing professionals believe their job will be taken by AI, which means I guess we don't think we add any value, but I, I would like to think otherwise. Um, obviously, in my conversations that are continuing in my research about employability and AI, I have heard from employers, you know, this kind of vague kind of interest about are the graduates ready to enter the workforce? What is this gonna do with entry level people? And obviously that gets my attention because I want all my graduates to excel and start great careers like I got to. So again, kind of wanna make sure that they're ready for things. In those conversations, one of the things that fascinated me the most, I expected to find maybe technology stuff getting thrown around, and it is, um, but was this really core basic idea about trust in all my conversations. And so what I mean by that is that if you have a business culture of trust where managers and employees are kind of talking and have a positive energy with each other, AI is used transparently in that organization. AI is used for a lot of cool things and experimented with really positively. There was one cool company I talked to 
um, that actually has a weekly meeting just to get people together to see how cool AI is doing stuff and just throw ideas around there. That culture is a positive management culture. That's deeper than knowing AI. That's something about managers having confidence to have a go and trusting their employees to responsibly have a go. And on the flip side of that, those of you that are in the audience or those of you that are in other places, if you've worked for a while, you probably had the experience of being in negative management cultures. Um, and when you think about those environments, you know, they're where your job feels shaky. They're where you think your boss probably doesn't value your expertise. And in those organizations, junior people in particular are using AI a lot, but they're not telling anyone that they're using it for the grunt jobs of communication stuff, making media lists, making tons of caption for social media content awareness days. There's a lot of stuff that AI is really helpful for. Senior consultants are also kind of doing the same thing in the freelance world where if their client trusts them and kind of has a good bond with them about what kind of value they're bringing to the table, they will definitely say, hey, this is one of the tools in my arsenal. On the flip side of that, again, if there's not an environment of trust between the client and the freelancer, you will then see this kind of more, not illicit, but secretive use of AI. Now you're like, you're talking about AI, you're talking about creative communications, what does that have to do with anything relating to marketing? Everything. Our business model is predicated on copyright, trademark, um, and intellectual property, specifically creating original ideas that are ownable by our clients and ownable by our brands. So if I have someone on the ground who is doing projects for me, um, and I'm seeing them and thinking, wow, this is great, this is original, but in actuality, it's a pastiche of the massive magpie that AI is through our digitized human experience. Um, suddenly, I either have no ability to charge the fees that pay salaries, because it's not original, and or you could probably get nicely sued for intellectual property infringement, which no marketing department ever really wants. So again, you think about that and you're like, well, okay, we need this business model to, to stay alive for many reasons. Um, it's a great career to be in. Um, but I was struck by the fact that trust is value and there is value in trust. And there's real value to what AI does. You know, it, you're never creative when you're kind of scheduling meetings. AI does those kinds of things really, really, really well. Um, you know, it also minimizes a lot of the kind of grunt tasks of the communications work, which I've kind of mentioned before. And specifically, one of the things that we have to do as creative communicators, write giant swaths of content for websites so that they're readable by search engines and also to feed the social media beast with endless amounts of social media content. It's very good at those kinds of things. Um, and when you think about that, then all of a sudden you're kind of like, okay, um, the last thing it's really good for is you've got a, a really small business, you've got a really good freelancer, and they are able, because they are nimble to respond to things that are happening, to actually leverage this tool to outcompete larger organizations. So in a way, I feel very positive about prospects for our grads and beyond um, in terms of navigating this future, which will be a small business and freelance future as all businesses learn to adapt to AI. So what should we focus on as educators? Um, and this is you know, a big remit. This is a very important thing to think about. Um, but the first thing that we need to do, and maybe all of us need to do this, is lateral thinking. Um, lateral thinking is super fun to teach in the classroom. There's all sorts of cool tips and tricks you can do for that. But it's this idea that we're talking to people. We're not talking to robots yet, I guess. Um, and AI is still very linear. And people are upside down, inside out, all over the place. Um, and so we need to think about that way, that lateral thinking to reach one another. And that's not just to sell ice cream. That's not just to sell shoes. In today's day and age, you know, you think about the climate crisis, you think about pandemics, you think about the politics of rage and hate and misinformation, and there has never been a time where there has been more need for people who can talk to other people with fact, with emotion, and again with that trust. Um, and that leads me to leadership development. When you think about leadership development, you think how important it is that, you know, you, we don't just create students who do creative tasks. We, in this environment where transparency is critical, need to create students that can lead creative projects with integrity and transparency and the confidence to do those kinds of things. Um, and then, obviously, a leader needs to take people along on a journey. You know, they need to actually get people convinced to go along for the ride, um, and that's presentation skills. Um, in the words of, of one of my senior interviewees, he said the best thing. He said, you know, we do jazz hands. AI don't do jazz hands, so for the foreseeable future, uh, develop your ability to talk to other people and that will probably help you out in this new world. Um, and then uh, systems thinking. 
you know, I think, again, going back to kind of the beginnings of our explorations of what do we need to train people up on, it's not the minutia. Um, and I've heard from a lot of different speakers here today about this kind of bigger picture view, and that's absolutely spot on. You know, we need to be able to understand how this works broadly and not just how one piece of it works. And that also then means education needs to be radically transformed and quickly. Um, and probably away from this idea of tick, tick box exercises of tests and strange things like that that don't get at higher order thinking. Um, and when you think about starting at primary school, things like logic, things like philosophy, and then moving on to secondary education and thinking about things like applied mathematics, chaos theory as it applies to all sorts of other disciplines, comparative religion, all of those kinds of topics that are very, very important in terms of interrogating how does this system work and what's my place in it. And last but certainly not least, and this is a shout out to my primary school and high school school teachers um, back in um, Chicago, Illinois, um, who definitely would appreciate my saying vocabulary is extremely important. Um, and AI is only as good as the props that you give it. So, you know, that's the difference of saying blue versus Azure versus Cobalt versus Lapis. I mean, all those great things that help something make something much more detailed. Also, to you think about a word like wet pavement, and then you think about words like petrichor, or you think about Hollywood wet, you know, that moment in the movies, even if it hasn't rained when it's glossy and glamorous and everybody looks cool, that, that will help AI generate better things and generate better. Um, but then, you know, that's just the creative part of it. You gotta think about research skills. And, you know, all students, including myself back in the day, hate referencing um, and citation. But I tell them this, and I truly believe this is one of the greatest values of university education, is that you will be able to evaluate the quality of information and where it comes from and why it's good or bad because of that practice and that rigor. Now again, that's not just because that's gonna make you a good marketer, but that's probably you know, a rich vocabulary with good research skills, that could actually save your life. You know, in the age of ivermectin curing COVID or 5G towers causing it or whatever some snake oil salesman is telling you about the world, you're being able to, to parse out what's real and what's true um, has never been more important for you. And so that kind of leads me to conclude with a few thoughts about the state of education in and of itself. And when you think about the fact that university degrees around the world um, are being called something that maybe isn't essential, and particularly when you look at something like the arts, where we're being told that the arts maybe have low value degrees and programs are being shut around the world in the humanities. And you think about that, and then you think back to the beginning of Prometheus, and you think about the fact that at a time when we are asking Promethean questions, you know, what is humanity? What am I made for? When you ask those questions, the only, only discipline that can answer them is actually the humanities. And so my bet is with Prometheus, and my, 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 my real, real true thing is that, thank you, Prometheus, because I think that humanity is all about original, originality and creativity, and I definitely think um, that we're all up to the challenge. Thanks for having me here today.